concentration point and 100% effort on everything. Over the ground, everything you got. Straight, pushing the gun, basically 100%. Working for each other. Everybody working for each other. Concentration. All 18 want you working together.
Right, all the best of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
I'm referring to Running the Guns, a naval drill performed at the Royal Tournament at Ellscourt each July. The three teams which take part are now in their fifth week of training and already it's looking as though a new track record could be set this year. Perfection in the field gun race would apparently be to finish in the time of two minutes and 39 seconds. Hugh Scott has been to watch one of the teams practicing. It's Devonport where a giant mural in their clubhouse captures the single-minded dedication of the men who run the guns. In the Royal Navy, these men are an elite, and for 12 weeks they're excused normal duties. They've been chosen for their strength, speed and stamina, and are training to take part in one of the toughest competitions in the world. These are the men who'll make up the Devonport field gun crew, which will represent this naval base against teams from Portsmouth and the Fleet Air Arm in the annual field gun competition at the Royal Tournament. The aim is to have 18 men heave and carry a ton of equipment over a series of set obstacles in the fastest possible time. 
It's a display which was inspired by the men of HMS Powerful, who in 1899 in South Africa removed the guns on their ships and dragged them over extremely rugged terrain to relieve Ladysmith during the Boer War. To be chosen for the crew is an honour in itself, but the training is ruthless and there are frequent injuries. Every split second counts as they battle to get the running time down to about 2 minutes and 44 seconds. Keep still. The running times we've been slotting in today, I'd say the average running time for today is around the 3-6 mark. Uh, we've just slotted in our best run now, I think we saved that for you. That was a 3-3.4, that's our best run this week. David Pond, you're the field gun officer this year. I must say, but watching it, it looks very tough indeed. Is it as dangerous as it appears? Indeed, it is dangerous, obviously, because of the weight of the equipment that's been used and also the fact that it's all moving around all at the same time. But if the drill is carried out in the correct fashion, which number one has taught the lads, then no, it's not. And no accident should occur, providing the drill is done properly. But you do get accidents, don't you? Indeed, we do, yes. Um, and they vary. Sometimes they're very small injuries uh, and other times they're large. But this year we've been very lucky. We have so far kept fairly injury free apart from stitches. You had an incident this morning. What happened? Yes, we did. Um, one of the lads, as he was going through the hole in the wall with the limber, managed to sandwich his finger between the limber and the wall. Basically, again, because he had his hand in the wrong position. Uh, so he ripped his, his small finger, which was stitched up, and he's got a possible fracture as well. Some of these runs may look crude and uncoordinated, but once honed, a gun crew in action is a pretty impressive spectacle of teamwork, skill and fitness. And Fleet Air Arm are just a fraction ahead at this stage, but again, they can be less than a set. No, it's Devonport on the far side, just in the lead. About six feet, the distance between them. Again, the gun uh, will signal the stopping of the watches. There are a number of lads who volunteer, and competition is very high indeed for a place in the crew. The difficulty is in getting men spared to run field gun uh, from other commitments that the Navy has. Well, of course, that raises the question about the relevance of a competition like this, which owes its origins to the Boer War. The relevance of that in a modern Navy. Well, I feel that it's very relevant indeed. Uh, today's Navy, because it's highly computerised uh, and automated, means that manpower is reduced. And so men serving on ships have to serve uh, often in compartments and so forth on their own, where they're under immense pressure and having to sustain much concentration. Now, to me, there's no, nothing equals field gun for having to sustain uh, mental pressure and uh, work in an environment which is very hostile. But why do they do it? What's in it for them? What's in it for them? The honour of running for Devonport, the camaraderie, the uh, desire and longing to be part of a team, which is, without any doubt at all, absolutely unique and unique to Phil Gunn. It's one big, unique, elite club. Some people see the running of the field gun as a magnificent display of pure courage, guts and coordination. Others see it as a disciplined form of madness. A lot of people climb mountains. They enjoy it. But the main thing is, you've got to go through this for uh, old Scorsi. Suffer here. Enjoy it there, win it. Come away with five cups, a record, silver medal. I started doing it in 67, and I still can't work out why I started doing it. Uh, we're all a bit strange, I think. Uh, at least I can't put my finger on it. Am I? Go! Back in South Africa in 1899, the sailors pulled their guns because the oxen they were using died of exhaustion. Today, it's all a matter of honour. At the Royal Tournament, only one fort will go through their minds. They've already made a record, now they want to break one. Now, if it's not the world's toughest sport, it certainly looks like it. No one who watches the annual field gun championships at the Royal Tournament on BBC One next week is likely to argue about that. 
Three naval teams of sweating, shouting, superbly trained athletes competing to shift an ancient 12-pounder gun round an obstacle course in the shortest possible time. This year, as usual, there's a team from Devonport, the best they're saying that the Navy has ever produced. Just watch this. David Pond, they look good, are they? They're excellent. They're the best crew we've ever had in Devonport. What's the secret? The secret is we've got an excellent first trainer this season and an excellent physical trainer. They've been whipped into perfect physical shape and the first trainer has concentrated so much on good drill that it's gone over into the crew. What about injuries? Because presumably if you get a lot of those, you're lost anyway. You are indeed, and that's down to good drill again. And in the, the initial weeks, certainly, the first trainer spent a lot of time on making sure the drill was good, and that eliminates injuries. The only serious injury this year to a member of the crew happened at home. He walked through a plate glass window. David Pond, are you going to win? Absolutely, definitely, yes. In fact, I predict that we'll break the Earth's Court record and come back here with all the caps. The record stands at 2 minutes 42 seconds. Since they started training in January, this team have beaten 2 minutes 50 no less than 50 times. If you are near Plymouth this evening, there's a chance to see them in action at HMS Drake near the Tall Point Ferry at 7 o'clock. Amazing guys. I've never actually understood why anyone wants to do all that with a field gun, but having made them together... ...sporting scene are at the moment, to say the very least, well, there's nothing much to write home about. international sporting scene are at the moment, to say the very least, well, there's nothing much to write home about. But at least Devonport's brawny Matlows are giving things a much-needed shot in the arm, as Jeremy Greenaway reports. For nearly two weeks now, they've been hurling themselves and a tonne and a half of equipment up and down the arena at the Royal Tournament in London. But today, the Devonport field gun team took things at a more leisurely pace as they marched triumphantly back to barracks at HMS Drake. Although a gear failure robbed them of a complete clean sweep, they carried home the four trophies that marked the team as the best ever. As they marched in, they were saluted by the flag officer of Plymouth, Vice Admiral David Brown. Then it was a beer and pasties celebration lunch. Tomorrow, the team has its official victory parade through the streets of Plymouth at midday. 
As for the secret of their success, there still seems a little uncertainty. The team's trainer and a member of three earlier Devonport teams is Chief Petty Officer Henry Cotton. I don't think there is a secret, really. Uh, you know, a lot of people have asked me that question and said, uh, well, what's the secret of your success, you know? And uh, you can't put your finger on it. Uh, obviously, having the quality in the crew amongst the lads, as long as you've got quality there, because you're only allowed 12 X's, so four new blokes have got to be brought in, six new blokes, sorry. Uh, and it, it's hit or miss with new boys. You know, you have to take them on and try them out. And luckily, all the ones I picked uh, came good. Now, it's the best team that has ever been in the history of the run, isn't it? Yeah. You've come back with how many world records? Well, we broke the aggregate record uh, by, I think it was uh, 45, 45 seconds. Uh, we've broken the existing fastest time record. And but for an act of God, when a breach spike broke on a run against Portsmouth, we'd have equaled the 32 points of 1966. But I'd just like to say, at that point, the crew... Uh, the Fleet Arm Crew in 1966 were running against two very inferior teams. For example, the Devonport crew didn't win a run up there, nor did they get under three minutes. So the victory this year is even more sweeter because uh, of the quality of the other two crews. Uh, Must have been a bit hurtful to have had those ten points uh, against you for that failure of gear. Yeah, ten seconds. It, it wasn't a penalty against us as such. It was. Uh, it just added ten seconds onto our actual running time in the arena. Mm -hmm because we were beating Portsmouth on the run out quite easily. Uh, and we came to lift the barrel out of the carriage for, to go up the ramp, and the spike just snapped. Uh, and uh, it was a shattering blow, really, because uh, at that stage, like I say, we were ahead. Uh, we had to change the spike, so we lost well over 10 seconds there. Uh, we beat them on the run back, and we beat them on the run home. Uh, but to even get a 2.58 out of that was a uh, great field gunning, you know. Oh, it's your last year, of course. That's right, yeah. It's my swan song. I'll leave the service in uh, December 85. You reckon there'll be a team as good again? I'd like to think so, yeah. You know, uh, I'd like to think that next year's crew would be equally as good as us, if not better. You know, because we don't want to sit back and say for the next 10 years that we were the greatest crew here, because I I'd like to see that success repeated in Devonport every year. Well done, the Devonport field gun crew. Has Devonport had such success? They started off with a record run and ended on Saturday by trouncing Pompey by a massive eight seconds. But there was never any doubt in the minds of the Devonport men, as Spotlight reported early last month. David Pond, are you going to win? Absolutely, definitely, yes. In fact, I predict that we'll break the Earl's Court record and come back here with all the caps. Brave words from Devonport's field gun officer, but on Saturday night, all his predictions came true. In their runs against Portsmouth on that night, the Guzz just underlined their supremacy throughout the Royal Tournament. To the fastest time, they added best overall time, least penalties, and perhaps the most coveted of all, the Inter-Command Cup. Devonport simply beat everyone else out of sight. So at last, on Saturday night, the months of punishing training, physical pain, and violent competition all became worthwhile. Today, the echoes of Earl's Court were fading as the victorious crew, with their backup team, marched into Plymouth's HMS Drake. Soon the team will disband and its members will rejoin their ships. In their place will come other men from the Navy, anxious to take over from what many people think is the best gun crew Devonport has ever produced. David, before you left, you said that you were going to win. Well, you have won. Any doubts at any time? Not really, no. I was very confident in my crew and very confident in my first trainer. What do you think of the lads? Oh, I'm just overwhelmed. They're outstanding. Absolutely brilliant. The best crew that, from any command ever. Can I turn to the, uh, the trainer, Mr Henry Cotton? Uh, you've been noted for your gentleness and kindness <laughs> throughout <laughs> this. Uh, what do you think of the lads? Uh, well, I'm chuffed to bits, you know. Uh, this is, like I've already said, is my last season in field gun, and uh, I don't think you could go out on a better note than this. You know, we're the best field gun crew that's ever gone to Earl's Court, and you know that's down on paper now. Uh, I think some of the records we've uh, done this year, you know, are going to take a long time to beat. And we was competing against two very good crews up there this year. You know, the crew that came third actually this year was only about 
eight seconds outside last year's aggregate record. So that shows you the sort of quality that was the, the other two crews were coming up with up there. What was it like on Saturday night when you know you'd swept the board? Uh, well, it, it was just overwhelming. Uh, all season, we, we've wanted to win so much, and it, 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 you can't put it into words, really. It was like our Wembley, and we, when we went around that arena, it was just so emotional. We'd worked so hard for that moment, and, uh, well, we just we couldn't take it all in, and it, it takes a while to take it in, but it, it was absolutely fantastic. I've got to really ask you this. What did you do on Saturday night? Yes. Well, we, we were all in bed by 10 o'clock uh, <laughs> because we had an early start next morning. No, so we, we had a few beers and uh, had a sing song and, and generally enjoyed ourselves. And uh, yeah, yeah, a bit of champagne and, and uh, soaked up a bit of, the, bit of the glory for which we'd worked so hard. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> ever a bunch of lads deserve success. It's the uh, men of the Devonport Field Gun crew. We filmed them uh, training several times over the past few months. Anyone who can go through that deserves to win all the cups that they can possibly do. That's it from Devonport Field Gun crew, who swept the board of trophies at the Royal Tournament last week. Today they paraded through Plymouth to the cheers of their fans and were guests of honour at a civic reception in the Guild Hall. So, good night to the fastest guns in the West and good night to you. Good night. <laughs>